Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like.
music of the universe plays You are holy, great and mighty The moon and the stars declare who you are I'm so Come on, let's sing it loud As the music of the universe plays You are holy, great and mighty Lord, you are holy. You're great and you're mighty. And Lord, you don't need us to sing your praise because the moon and stars do it for you. Your son Jesus said that even the, the rocks would cry out in praise uh, if the people were silenced. Uh, so Lord, we just want to worship you as the God of the universe this morning. The one who is an amazing God, the one who is far, far beyond our comprehension. And Lord, we also confess that we are unworthy uh, this morning. We're unworthy to bring you uh, praise. But Lord, somehow um, you love to hear our praise. You love to hear our worship. And we ask that you would forgive us for when we fall short uh, of, the, of the beings that you created us to be. And Lord, especially uh, when we fall short as your people, as the people of God, uh, forgive us. And thank you that we know that we are safe and secure in you. Thank you that you're a loving God, that you are a forgiving God, that you're a kind God, that you're a generous God. Thank you that you have uh, the best for us. Thank you that your plans are to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. And Lord, I um, thank you that uh, that hope and that future is known to you. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month. We don't know how long this pandem pandemic is going to last. But Lord, you do. It is all in your hands. And Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us as your people, that you would strengthen us as individuals as we go through what we're doing now. And Lord, may our minds always turn to you. 
Lord, when we don't know what to do, may our, may our minds turn to you. May our thoughts be with you. May our prayers be always focused on you. Amen. Good morning everyone, sorry it's me again. Our reading today refers to the need for us to be reborn again, Father. And at the moment it feels like we've been born in a different time. And we can't act as human beings want to, by socialising with those we love and hold dear, by being suspicious of people, and facing everyone in masks when we go shopping. We pray, Lord, that the time will come soon when the wind of change will sweep the virus away will transform it into another manageable illness. And when the only tears we have will not be complicated restrictions, but will be of happiness in meeting those we love. We pray, Lord, for the health and care staff that are looking after COVID patients, many of whom are still weary from all they had to do in the spring and summer. We pray for their health, strength and fortitude. Whatever decisions are taken locally, nationally and within the UK, Father, we pray that they will have a positive effect on the spread of the pandemic. Last week, Mike referred to the tentative plans to start letting groups back carefully into our beloved buildings, Lord. We pray that this can go ahead safely so we can start breathing some life back into your home in Flodden. 
we had some distressing news that Slimming World won't be coming back, which will have a big effect on our income. We pray that when things improve, we can build up a steady stream of community groups using the buildings that can bring much needed finances in. Yesterday, Lord, we heard of a terrible attack on a teacher in France. We can't begin to understand the hatred that develops in fanatics and the complete disregard for human life. But we know that Jesus faced fanatics that cost him his life. A huge sacrifice done for us with all our weaknesses. We pray for the family of the teacher murdered and for all in the school who knew him. Let them be comforted, Father, and let calm be in that area and the time for reflection. We pray for the religious leaders to work together to reduce the hatred that exists among some of the young. We need positive news, Lord, and there were some this week when we heard that two Scottish women have returned home after a month in a Russian hospital undergoing what they hope will be life-changing medical treatment for multiple sclerosis, which they've had for 20 years. One from Tain, not so far away. They were treated in Moscow for stem cell transplants, treatment not currently available on the NHS. With 15,000 people in Scotland living with MS, this is a beacon of hope, Lord. We pray that their immune systems will build up and then they will be free from other infections. And we pray that this treatment, which can help some sufferers, will become more readily available in the UK. It was also wonderful news, Father, to hear that the Scottish Government has agreed funding of £20 million for the Cairngorm Ski and Outdoor Activity Centre, £16 million of which will go on the funicular railway repair, with the rest on improvements to the ski centre. This is of huge importance to not only the Abbeymore area, but the Highlands generally. And at a time when we are so worried about jobs in our key tourism business, it gives us hope that things will get better in that area in 12 to 18 months. Jacinda Ardern has won a second term as New Zealand Prime Minister Father, and it's so refreshing to have a world leader who has shown such different skills to so many others leading a country. We pray for her in a second term and that we'll have more leaders who can be more in touch with the people they represent. There's also very good news, Father, to hear that Cap Gemini have won a number of significant new IT contracts, which could lead up to 250 more jobs being created in the MS and Nairn area. We thank you for this, that these will be suitable for many of lost jobs in the tourism sector due to COVID-19. What a blessing. These times are hard, Lord, and many of us are struggling with physical, mental and practical issues. In Isaiah 41.10, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Help us to turn to you more, Lord. We pray to, particularly for those who have additional health issues, worries, and are recovering from treatment or about to start it. In the silence of our prayers, Father, please listen to the names we bring before you and bless them. Loving Father, we ask for your blessing on all these prayers. Amen. So this morning, uh, we've got Barry Dennis with us. So a very, very well, warm welcome to you, Barry. It's good to have you with us again. And uh, Barry, I understand that you're going to, to read and then go straight into the sermon. So, so thank you again for being with us and I'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you, Douglas. And good morning, everyone. Good morning to you. Um, can, we, can we join together in prayer as we, uh, as we think on this passage from John chapter 3 and verses 5 to 8. Loving God, we pray that you would bring these words to life to us today, that you would uh, speak to us through your word. And we ask for your presence and your blessing to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll come to the reading in, in a little while. Uh, I was out walking this morning and and no doubt that the seasons are changing. In fact, some of these mornings it feels more like winter time than than the autumn. Those uh, lovely, warm, sunny days we had in early in the summer are just a, a distant memory already. And I can't believe that we're 
already in the middle of October with just with Christmas just uh, over two months away. We've got the lights on uh, in the morning and uh, late afternoon and I'm setting the fire every day and uh, the leaves have started coming down from the trees which is a, a real hassle for us because uh, we're surrounded by trees and, and every year the rones and the gutters fill up and have to be cleaned out. And there's been quite a few windy days in the last few weeks. But you know, if you want to experience real wind, you need to go to the island of Harris. Uh, I mean, the next stop is America there and the, the Atlantic gales come, come in and the, the Atlantic rollers beating down on the beaches and, and the rocks. It's quite, it's quite beautiful. We were there about five or six weeks ago and the weather was just atrocious. The rain was driving in horizontally and, and you could hardly stand with the wind. And uh, I foolishly tried a wee game of golf one morning and um, I teed off in the first tee and hit not a bad shot for a change and the ball soared up into the air and I watched as it slowed down and came to a stop and then started coming back to me. It was quite, quite disconcerting. Um, uh, but uh, I was out tidying in the garden there, getting ready for the winter, and, uh, and it was windy that day. And I watched as the leaves were, were circling on the patio. The wind was making the leaves swirl and circle on the patio as though they were dancing. You know, and it made me think, you know, the wind changes things. The wind can change the direction of things, you know, take my golf ball for a start. But how do you know the wind is there? Well, we know we can feel the wind on our faces or uh, we, can, we can hear the wind, we can hear the noise the wind that makes. Um, how else can you know that the wind is there? Well, you can't see the wind, but yes, you can, you can see the effects that the wind has. Those dead leaves were dancing. And you know, God causes things to dance. God raises dead things to life. That's the mission of God, to raise dead things to life in your life, in, in our city and, and, and in our land. That's God's speciality, bringing dead things to life. Those brown, dry, crunchy, dead leaves began to dance. Why? Because the breath of God was on them. John 3, which we're just coming to read, uh, verses 5 to 8, is the first time that Jesus explains his life to somebody who asks him. And he uses a metaphor of wind. And I believe this is important for all of us. God wants to do something important in all of our lives. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night, almost in secret. He doesn't want to be seen. This is to be a private chat. Now, Nicodemus is a good man, but he has a feeling he knows that there's something missing in his life. He's seen the miracles of God. He's seen the power of God. He's seen the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me read to you Jesus's reply to him. I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say that you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. And just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. This is Jesus' answer to a man who was asking, there must be something else. There must be another way than this religious life that I've been leading. I've been trying my best, I, I've, I've obeyed all the rules, but I'm seeing power and, and peace in you that I've never seen in anybody else's life, anywhere else. So D Jesus describes this as the wind 
that you can hear, that you can feel, and that you can see the effects of, but that you cannot see it with your physical eyes. Jesus says that you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. He's not talking about physical eyesight here. He's not talking about a, a visit to the opticians to, to get your eyesight tested. He's talking about the eyes of your heart, because this is where we see. In scripture, it, it says, open the eyes of my heart, God, that I might see you. Nicodemus is confused at this, and he's wondering, well, how can I go back into my mother's womb and be rebirthed? I, I'm a grown man. That just sounds plain weird. What are you talking about, Jesus? He had led a good life. He was a religious man. He, he read his Bible. He, he obeyed the Ten Commandments. He, he prayed to God. Now, you might be hearing this for the first time, but here it is. Jesus has come to end religion. The law meant death. But Jesus had come to offer relationship with God, a way that our hearts could be forgiven and free, a way that our spiritual eyes could be opened to see the beauty and the love that God has for each one of us to offer a relationship with God through his spirit, not, not by trying harder to be a good person, not by trying to read our Bibles more, coming to church all our lives, and so on. Jesus says that he has come to offer a relationship with God by one means and one means only, the wind. The wind that blows right through our hearts, through our thinking, right through our habits. The wind of God's presence that utterly transforms our lives and causes us as dead leaves to start dancing. That's what the, Jesus was trying to explain to Nicodemus. Where the spirit of the Lord there is there, there, there is religious code and the law, no. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there are intelligent Christians who have been in church for years and who know their Bibles and have birth and inheritance rights. No. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and great, great glory. You know, we are so often tricked into thinking that we're the ones that make a difference in the world. We're the ones that can make a difference to people's lives. I'm the one who can impact the world for greater good. Now, just like Nicodemus hoped and thought. Now, now don't mishear me on this. I firmly believe that in Jesus, we are destined to make a difference in this world. But here's the thing. If it's in our strength or in our wisdom, then we're being subtly deceived. You know, as many times in our lives that do we make choices or we have to make personal changes even. Changes and choices in our, our work patterns, maybe our diets, our parenting, our, our habits. But you know, the one thing that you cannot change is somebody else's heart. You can't do that, no matter how hard you try. There's only one person that can do that. And he's called the Ruach, the Ruach, the wind of God. The Holy Spirit is that person, not some abstract cosmic force, but a person who can change people's hearts. He, he gives us new starts in life. He causes rebirth, regeneration. He causes dead things to come to life. He raises dead things off the floor and out of the graves and causes them to dance for joy. Those dead bones in the valley that, that Ezekiel saw were only brought to life by one thing and by one thing only, the breath of God, that same Ruach, the Holy Spirit. Now we so often put our faith and our hope in different things, maybe medicine, maybe hoping for a, for a vaccine, maybe 
Maybe technology might save us. Maybe our maybe we even hope vaguely that our politicians might save us. Maybe our money might save us. Maybe our relationships or our friendships might save us. You know what's happening right now? I think that the winds of change are blowing. Things are changing right across our world today, probably especially in the United States. And I think it's quite remarkable. You know, we used to classify the West as, as one big area, but, but I don't think that's true anymore. It's so fractured nowadays. And what is happening, I think, is remarkable in terms of the potential for renewal. Will it be a Christ-centered renewal? Will it be a, a technological-centered renewal, a medically-centered renewal, or politically-centered renewal? Well, well, we really pray that it will be a, a Jesus-centered renewal. But I believe this morning that renewal is not just for the United States, but for us listening to this this morning in our hearts and in our lives and in our homes. In fact, for anybody who is willing to stand in the wind, in humility and in need and in hunger. But here's the problem. Christians, and I include myself in this, need to be willing to stand in the wind. We've probably heard about the wind of the Spirit many many, many times, and we know what the Bible says, and we've seen evidence of it over the years, but here's the deal. Unless I go out for a walk to stand in the wind, and here's what I believe that God would say to us today, we have to be in the wind to see its effects, to have our, our hairstyles changed, to have the cobwebs blown away, because that's, that's what the wind does, right? We could sit at home in the warm and comfort, and, and I, this is a metaphor for the Christian life that I'm talking about here. It's warm and it's comfortable, and it's maybe a thought going out into the wind. The Holy Spirit says, get up and go and stand in the wind. No, it's, it's, it's cozier here. It's warm and comfortable, and I'm going back to the kettle, put the kettle on. You know, that's the choice that many Christians make and, and are making. We're, we're doing okay. We're, we're, we're getting through this. We're, we're surviving, e even as a church, even though it's difficult. We're getting through these hard times. I'm doing all right. But God's saying to us and to his church, not just here, but right throughout the land, stand in the wind. Stand in the wind of my spirit. Stand in my presence and be cleansed by my ruach. Maybe, maybe you're looking for a hurricane, but all you need is to hear that, that quiet whisper. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're looking for, for that quiet whisper, but maybe it's going to take a hurricane blowing through your life. A hurricane of the Holy Spirit. Point is, it's not up to you how you meet with God. It's up to God. And hallelujah for that. Elijah looked for, for God in the fire and in the hurricane and in the earthquake. But you know where God spoke? If you know your Bibles, you know he spoke in the whisper. Our Bibles call it a whisper, but the, the Hebrew word for that is, is much nearer silence. In the utter silence, God spoke to him. We need more than ever to stand in the wind, not just observe from a distance, perhaps in places where revival is happening in Korea and, uh, and Brazil saying, isn't that wonderful? Look what the Spirit is doing over there. No, it's time that we stood in the wind and had our hairstyles mucked up and our plans and our, our programs messed around. Messed around by grace. Our human strength brought to weakness by the kingdom of God that would set Jesus above us, above the church, above 
famous speakers, above our worship bands, above our favourite preferences, to put Jesus high and lift it up. Would that not bring a revival that would make people sit up and, and take notice? There's a great quote from Alan Scott. He says, we are not the movers and shakers. We are the moved and shaken. We're not the movers and shakers. We are the moved and shaken. And it's time that our platforms were dismantled. And I don't mean the platforms that the, the preacher stands on or the platforms the worship band stands on. I mean the platforms in our hearts and in our lives. We need to turn them into altars. You know, when we promoted ourselves, our own ends, when we built platforms for ourselves in the way that we want things done, the way we see things. Because God desires change in our lives today. Whoever you are, however long you have been a Christian, but change must be on God's terms, not ours. Jesus said the wind comes and goes wherever it wants. And you know, that, that's the tough part because, because we like to be in control. And change starts with the eyes of, of our heart being opened. Not, not just tweaks around the edges. Not for us trying harder to be a better Christian, better person. No. By starting to stand in the wind. After all, faith is a gift, not a work. For us to start believing that we're forgiven and free this morning by faith. To repent of our sins. When we surrender ourselves to that, that's the change that God brings in our lives. That's the change that the wind brings. It blows right through our lives. And the encouragement to us this morning, whoever you are, is to put ourselves in the path of oncoming grace. And so often we pray for the wind to, to blow over others. We're quick to judge. We're slow to repent. We're, we're, we're slow to ask God to cleanse us, but quick to present our prayer lists to God. To break us. To mold us. And to fill us with his spirit. The breath of heaven. Maybe, maybe we have prayed. Maybe we have said. God, fill me. God, fill me. God, send me. Send me, Lord. Perhaps God is saying, I can't. I can't. You haven't stood in the wind. We're sitting in our comfort zones with our false idols and our, and our platforms. And God says, there's no room for me. Fill me, Lord. I can't. There, there, there's no room. If I gave you more of me right now, you would be crushed. And Jesus said to Nicodemus and, and says to us too today, Christianity is not a religion. It's about relationship. It's about faith. It's about being held and loved by the one who made you. It's about being forbid, uh, forgiven and, and finding joy and ultimately it's about finding your way home. Because Jesus didn't just say these words. He lived them out. He suffered and died so that millions of sons and daughters could be called home to God. That you, that you could be called home to God. Amen. May it be so. Shall we pray? Loving God, you knew us before the world was created. You, you formed us in our mother's wombs. Our minds, our bodies, our souls, 
for your glory. You have breathed life into us. But Lord, that's not just the kind of life that we, that we need. And we pray this morning that you would breathe once again the life of your spirit into each one of us. That we might know what it is to be called home. To be in your presence. To, to stop striving and trying harder. Stop being anxious. And that we might just trust to know your presence, to know your strength, to know your peace in whatever circumstances we face. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. now the blessing. May the blessing of God from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you and on those you love, both now and forevermore. Amen.